terrible response from uh, Peter, who's the CEO of um, uh, the NUS, which in summary said, we're sorry we caused more work, but we're not sorry we did it, you know, reading between the lines. Um, there was no apology for the act. They said, he, said it was, he said it was a genuine mistake, but of course he's going to say that. Um, and then he also gave us things about GDPR that had no relevance, and then also gave us something about us withholding students' rights to vote, which we won. Yeah. So, yeah, so we, yeah, that was their response. It wasn't an official NUS response, it was a Peter Robin Robinson? Right. Robertson. Robertson. Uh, Robertson response. Um, I think it speaks, without wanting to get too political, I think it speaks volumes that they didn't. From a union point of view, um, the board of trustees, the individual members of the board of trustees, have expressed satisfaction with that response, and it's likely that the whole board will be sending a response to it. Um, just on the GDPR, the people they contacted had they specifically opted in to be yes. contacted? Yes. 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 Right. But the, the problem was that the people that the the, uh, the yes campaign asked if they could send that email, and they were specifically told they could not send it. No, no, I was just thinking in, in terms specifically of GDPR, because if in that case the NUS owes a few more millions of the government. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of the, because uh, I mean obviously I first saw the um, information about the breach, um, I didn't quite know what it was, because obviously it wasn't broadcast. Um, I thought it was that banner that had been put up on the uh, bike rack, uh, which, that's funny. I mean, it probably was... It was in a bit of bad taste, didn't look great, but that's beside the point. Um, but I think having the, um, I mean, obviously not being able to contact the uh, staff's all well and good, but in the case of sending a person down to give their own point of view, seems like cutting that out would be, as it would be slightly over the uh, needed response in terms of the uh, breach. Not contacting and not sending information over to uh, people via the emails. So they shouldn't have done that in the first place. But not having even an officer come down and talk to people about it would be almost uh, almost silencing their size in terms of this specific election, regardless of the section of the last one. Um, also, I've had quite a few people talk about the fact that um, Considering we're a uni of how many people roughly? Like? Sixteen thousand. Yeah, sixteen thousand. Two hundred and fifty making a uh, making a like deciding vote does sound rather undemocratic in terms of a almost super minority deciding on a large so large sum of money that is going to be either put or not put throughout the entire uni. Twenty-two. 0.6% people voting for the Conservative government, so we'll get that one. But it's a democracy in the top. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if you're able to do that. 250 votes is the NUS figure, so you can go higher than that, but that's, that's what they say. You need 250 votes. election would run if someone gets disqualified, they would then would be able to run again. So for example, they've broken the rules, they've then lost their right to agency in a second referendum. I mean that's it's more of a if an individual member came down rather than the entire representative of the uh, aid organization. You still have representative of the re organization. For example if I went somewhere, for example if I went to talk to people in Trinity College, I'd still be representative of Russia Shield Which is why we're going to if <laughs> <laughs> you, you actually step back and have an objective about uh, going to do something another team can't, <coughs> the no team can't bring someone from an outsider kind of company to fight their corner either. So if you actually look at it, it's actually more fair now. Yeah, it just be students and students. Yeah. 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 And that was one of the issues is that the no campaign has, I think, only four, correct me if I'm wrong, but four uh, campaigning students.
students that volunteered and were very loud. And then the Yes campaign had 27 that didn't say too much. So it's down to students. If students want to participate either way, then we have to listen to them. Any other questions? No? Uh, thanks, Kate. But do you want to move on to your update on change the bylaws by trustees? Didn't even realise that was there. Are there any other business? Um, so, very technical point, the council has to be updated. Um, our bylaws also specify that a referendum vote should last, I believe, five days. Um, based on the SAB election campaigning period, we received a lot of feedback from candidates that was far too long a time and took a toll on their mental well-being and physical well-being in some cases. Um, so, as an exceptional rule for the referendum, um, we took to Board of Trustees and they approved a shortening of the campaigning and voting period for referenda to two days. So, just to update Council on that. Okay. Any questions? You said two days, there are specific times. I remember this happening the first one of the traffic that was originally brought in. Is uh, it starting at a certain time, ending at a certain time? Is it just the 24 hours? So, like, yeah, the specific. It's a 48 hour period. Uh, for the previous referendum, uh, we timed it to open immediately after the debate, so it was 9 o'clock till 9 o'clock. Um, for the next referendum, we want to be as accessible as possible and have as much campaigning time as possible, so we've moved it from 12 till 12. Thanks, Kate. Um, then Dana, Union Council News. Okay, so um, my outfit proposes uh, new rights for anyone that works for the union and is paid has an identical pliable union council release, so it says their role on the back. I would say why can't 